delighted to say that joining us now live from Jerusalem is the Times columnist Melanie Phillips. Melanie, thank you for tuning in and joining us today on Talk TV. Really appreciate it. Um, something that struck me, and I came back to England uh, on Saturday, was that however you look at what happened on Saturday, uh, and whatever side of the coin you argue from, it highlights deep, deep divisions in the United Kingdom, doesn't it? Yes, I think it's uh, the most alarming thing that uh, people have finally woken up to, something which I'm afraid I've been saying for a number of decades now, um, that there is uh, a body of people in Britain, uh, in the Muslim community, uh, who don't subscribe to uh, British and Western values. They are a minority of the community, but they have been allowed to run rampant over the years. And what we've seen in uh, the last few weeks is that these people have come out onto the streets and they have brought with them a lot of well-meaning people who believe that they are entitled to, as they are, uh, to campaign and protest at what they see as the wrongdoings of Israel in Gaza. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of other people who are not Muslim, uh, who subscribe to the demonization of Israel that's gone on week in, week out, year after year. And what we've seen is unprecedented scenes of not just disorder, but of incitement to uh, violence, to hatred of the Jewish community in particular, um, but also not just the Jewish community, which has borne the brunt of it with appalling um, calls for the murder of Jews, the destruction of Israel, um, the targeting over the weekend on the Jewish Sabbath, on Remembrance Day itself, the targeting of Jews leaving their synagogues, abuse directed at them, but not just Jews, we've seen poppy sellers and people just wearing the poppy lapel pin being picked on and intimidated uh, by uh, so-called protesters. I say so-called protesters because these are basically hoodlums uh, who are taking over the streets. And what seemed to me to be so very troubling was that this was basically a demonstration of power over the streets. This was a group of people who uh, were Melanie, taking part... Melanie, um, the British Legion asked yesterday about the those accusations of intimidation, etc., and they said that actually the, there was no targeted intimidation or violence against the poppy sellers. Well, we can see that what happened. We can all see it for ourselves. It, it's, it depends on how you look at it. If you can see two poppy sellers moving their the table in Victoria Station where they were nervously, having been surrounded by a mob, uh, which looks intimidating, looks menacing. So I think it's, it's, it's stretching a point. And we also saw the people wearing the poppy pin uh, being abused personally. A couple, one of them, the, the, the wife, was brought to tears uh, by the abuse she was getting. So, um, and we've also seen people holding the union flag being set upon by people holding the Palestinian flag and so on. So, uh, and I understand. And vice versa, of course. You've seen those videos, surely, of um, people gathering at train stations where people who were wearing the poppy, turning up at Victoria or Waterloo train station and calling Muslim people terrorists. As much as there has been uh, horrendous anti-Semitic abuse um, and chanting, et cetera, and anti-Semitic sentiment, there has also been Islamophobic sentiment. And I'm, I'm concerned that your opening statement there, the suggestion that there are, you know, Muslim people in this country, it's a very broad net to kind of cast out to say that there are people who are Muslim who haven't assimilated necessarily into our culture. I just want to know what exactly you mean by that, get into the detail of that a little bit more. Well, for a start, you have misrepresented what I've said. I oh. said very clearly, the minority. Sorry. Uh, but nevertheless, I said there was a group who believed that. Mm -hmm. And there is a group who believed that. Uh, we can see them on the streets uh, shouting and screaming abuse, not just about Israel, not just wanting the destruction of Israel, calling for the murder of Jews. Um, and uh, we know that a number of the people who uh, have been or in involved in the organization of these demonstrations are people who are actually members of Hamas or have been associated or associated with with of Hamas. Of course, and I'm I'm sorry if I'm, I'm sorry to have misrepresented um, what you said earlier. I think my point was more: what is it about Islam um, or Muslims that you felt was not compatible? Or I'm not sure if you were suggesting that it wasn't compatible or was compatible is, with British culture. 
what I've written for many years is that there is a stream within Islam, and it surely must come as no surprise to you or to anybody else to know that there is a stream within Islam, a stream of thinking, which is called Islamist, which is extremist, mm -hmm. which believes that uh, the Islamic world must take over the, the, the Western world. And those people are generally under the umbrella of the Muslim Brotherhood. There is also a parallel stream in Shia uh, Islam under the aegis of Iran. Um, and their project, and we know this from documentation, uh, is to take over the Western world by one means or another, both by violent and democratic means. And these people have been in Britain for a number of years. The British authorities have turned a blind eye to them. Uh, they are behind a number of organizations in the Muslim community. While most Muslims, I'm sure, would have absolutely no truck with violence or indeed extremism of any kind. Melanie, can I uh, jump in a sec, if that's all right? And I, I, <laughs> I, I agree with you, and I, and I get where Nicola's coming from. I, I, I said about an hour ago, you know, our country is based on the right to protest and the right, well, freedom of speech. But for me, from an outside point of view, and I wasn't, I only just got back to the country, so I, I, I was a, a non-participant observer. I used a word an hour ago called hijacked. It strikes me nowadays that there are, there are causes and there are things that people feel very passionately about, genuine people, OK, and they get hijacked by a mob, a hate-filled mob, whether that is, you know, people... I mean, that, that, the banner with the swastika, I mean, it's disgusting. And I know that in North London on Sunday, people were scared, Jewish people, because people in cars with Palestinian flags... I'm sure that doesn't speak for the entirety of the Palestinian race. But as much as that is a hijack, those yobs that attacked the cenotaph, who would say to me, because a friend of mine sent me something saying, that's because we're hacked off with the police who won't stand up to these people. None of that helps anybody, does it? That is the division I was talking about when I first brought you on, Melanie. And that division either comes from weak policing... Uh, I, I think we should have cracked down on it a long time ago. And it's interesting, isn't it, that Sunak's now saying, I'm going to crack down on it now. We should have done it a long time ago across all parties and all sides, would be my opinion. Well, uh, there's a lot there what you, what you, in what you just said and a lot that I agree with. Um, the far right have uh, cottoned on or, or have, 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 uh, have spatchcocked themselves onto what's happening. They've taken what they see to be a genuine uh, grievance uh, uh, by the public who are astonished by these weeks of violent and incendiary and incitement demonstrations going on. Um, and they were just looking for trouble. Uh, and they came down to London, provoked trouble and got it. Um, but the divisions, I think, that are much more important, I mean, th those, that, that, that is important, but that is, a, that is a very late development. We've had weeks of this, weeks of incitement on the streets where the police have done absolutely nothing. I personally think that should have been nipped in the bud a long time ago. I think there are laws that the police could use for various reasons they are choosing uh, not to use, not to use these, these laws. But the divisions are more fundamental. They are between people who, um, I mean, certainly what you say is correct. There are people who have a genuine uh, and legitimate uh, uh, dislike uh, of what Israel is doing in Gaza, they are entitled to express their view. Mm. But my goodness me, you talk about this being hijacked. How many weeks does it take for people who are well-meaning and who have a legitimate grievance against Israel? How many weeks does it take for them to realize that they should not be marching or would not wish to march alongside people calling yeah. for the destruction of Israel and the murder of Jews? I mean, they wouldn't for a moment march on a BNP-infested uh, demonstration and say, well, we are just here to express our legitimate views about immigration, uh, that we are in favour of it or, or whatever it is, um, or against it. Um, nobody would do that. that Melanie. Couldn't okay. agree more. Can I Couldn't just agree ask more. before we lose you? Um, Abby Dicta, Israel's Minister for Agriculture and the former head of Shin Bet, had said that Israel is rolling out the Gaza Nakba. Now, he's on the government security cabinet, which manages the war. That implies therefore, that Israel intends to permanently displace all Gazans, according to him. Now, do we know if he's been reprimanded at all? I have no idea. It's the first time I've heard of this remark. There are various politicians <laughs> who shoot 
mouths off, who generally are slapped down. Um, it is not uh, the, the uh, as far as I can see, it is not, there is no evidence that Israel wants to produce, uh, I mean, the, 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 the word Nakba is itself a lie. It's based on the idea that Israel or the Jews uh, forcibly displaced uh, the indigenous Palestinians in 1948. Every word of that is actually a lie. Um, so that is a very tendentious word to use, and I'd be very surprised to hear an Israeli uh, minister using it. But put that to one side, whatever he meant, uh, the aim of the Israelis is perfectly clear. They are, have been under rocket attack and still are under rocket attack. Very few media in Britain are, re are reporting this. Every day there are dozens and dozens of rockets being fired, particularly in the south and the north of Israel. People are still being wounded. Uh, people are still living in shelters. Israel went to war because there was an invasion of people who set out to murder Israelis and whose intention was to murder everybody and to take over the country. And unless they are stopped, and in previous years they've been, Israel has, 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 has moved against them and has made some inroads into their organization, but hasn't stopped them. Now it has to be stopped. What happened was genocidal. If Israel doesn't stop them, Israel will be facing a genocidal enemy, which will be unstoppable. And that is why Israel is going to war. So to talk about you know, the, the intention to expel the population of Gaza. Did anyone say in the Second World War that the Allies' intention was to expel the Germans? People were very clear what that was happening. There was a mortal threat to democracy, to freedom, to human life, and uh, 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 there had to be. Those are the war. words of Avi Dicta, though, at Bernie. I'm not, I'm not putting words in, in their mouth there. The, this is a quote that we've been given. Taking words out of context. I have no idea what the context was. I have no idea what he said or what he meant. I'm telling you that the idea that, you know, there is some sort of vindictive agenda here, which is often suggested in the British media, when in fact Israel is facing what could be a second Holocaust. The idea that Britain, which understood in 1939 what it had to do to defend civilization against barbarism and did not ever stop to consider, and nobody said, we have to protect the German civilians in the way that the Israelis are going out of their way to do in these conditions. To have that suggested is really quite unconscionable. Whatever this man, Abi Dichter, said, I don't know. And what he meant, I don't know. And maybe he misspoke himself. Maybe he said something wrong. I hope if that's the case, he will be he will be disavowed. But I'm telling you that to suggest that this is the agenda of Israel is malign. Uh, Melanie, an absolute pleasure to have you on again. I know you're live in, in Jerusalem, and thank you. Your passion shines through, and the way that you talk is, is very, very interesting and candid. You'll come back, will you, my friend? You'll come back for us another time? Anytime. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very thank much you, indeed. Melanie Phillips.